problems. So advanced glycation end products and the direct contribution that they have to chronic diseases. Um, and I have a good paper at length that is a review on this, but it is a steady buildup of these glycation products um, that will affect nearly every organ of the body. In fact, I say nearly because I'm not familiar with evidence of every organ, but I suspect it is, in fact, every organ. The only measurement we have to get an idea of glycation is HbA1c. So glycated hemoglobin is the marker. That is when the glycation has occurred at the hemoglobin, not only compromising or, or most, most directly compromising the red blood cell's ability to carry oxygen, its most famous job, um, but it also then becomes the only marker that reflects overall glycation. Now, I had mentioned when I first uh, brought up age formation, that there's an inflammatory component to this. And this is where Dr. Reynolds, my friend and colleague, first started, uh, and I first started collaborating because I, um, when I was a young professor, one of my primary focuses was uh, something called a pattern recognition receptor. Um, particularly a receptor on a cell. So a receptor is something like a, a baseball mitt that is used to catching things. And the one, the receptor that I studied was one called TLR4. TLR4 has substantial similarities with another pattern recognition receptor called RAGE, R-A-G-E, which is the receptor for advanced glycation end products. So as much as I just got done describing the, the formation and consequence of advanced glycation end products or ages and them binding to molecules and irreversibly damaging them, you also have, we add to that, this phenomenon wherein age is binding to rage. And when rage is activated, it ramps up inflammation. So anytime you can increase age formation, you are increasing, you are promoting this pro-inflammatory environment or milieu within the body at large. Indeed, if you look at markers of inflammation like C-reactive protein, which more and more people get measured, or TNF-alpha, uh, many of the interleukins or the interferon, like interferon gamma, all of these are, and there are, there are dozens of these that, I, that we could list. I could probably get through about a dozen, and then I'd have to look up the names of the rest. Um, but there are many of these molecules that are both a consequence of inflammation being turned on and a cause because as they start spreading through the body, they activate other pro uh, immune cells like macrophages. Um, but suffice it to say, the more we have inflammation, the more we're damaging tissues. Inflammation is something that is intended to be turned on and then turned off. It has a very specific target like a wound. I need to heal this wound, or I need to fight this particular bacteria. When you have this metabolically derived inflammation, there's no end. Um, as much as the person is continuing to exist in a hyperglycemic state, even temporarily spiking it up and down, at that peak, you have the formation of advanced glycation end products. Those advanced glycation end products can bind rage, promoting inflammation. And of course, one consequence of inflammation is going to be insulin resistance. And then uh, be in, uh, because inflammation is one of the cardinal causes of insulin resistance, but you also have just the potential of inflammation to put the immune cells in a state of aggravation, if you will, um, including macrophages, which, which can be residing in the walls of the blood vessel or the endothelium.